respect for concentration. It's interesting that in that verse we chanted just now, there's a phrase, respect for the training. And the training, of course, covers virtue, concentration, and discernment. And then it comes back and emphasizes respect for concentration. The Buddha wants you to realize that this stillness of mind, this ability for the mind to just settle down and be still, requires extra respect because we tend to be very easily bored with it. Sitting here, not thinking about much, and you're wondering, how dull can this get? How stupid can I get? And then you find yourself running off someplace else, and you've ruined the stillness you had. You've got to learn how to appreciate it, the ability to get the mind to settle down and stay settled down. And John Fuing would talk about the distinction between learning how to do the concentration and learning how to maintain it. In other words, getting the mind focused with the breath is doing it and then staying focused with the breath. It's a different skill. The first skill is coming out of the noise and into the stillness. And in some cases that requires nothing more than just remind yourself that you'd like to be with the breath, and there it is. Other times you have to think your way here, cut your way through the vines of the mind. It's attachment to this, it's attachment to that. This is why in the section on concentration in John Lee's book on, on mindfulness, he talks a lot about developing a sense of sangwega as an important element in getting the mind to settle down. In other words, you would look at the things that would pull you out, and you see there's nothing much there. The issues of the body, the issues of the world. The world is swept away. The body is composed of all kinds of parts, none of which you would particularly want to identify with if you had to. Choose which part in the body you say, well, this is me, this is mine. And the important element there is the sangwega, a sense of dispassion for these things. So you can disengage from them, at least temporarily. Get the mind to be willing to let go and just stay with the breath. Those reflections are really good because they'll be there to remind you if you ever get tempted to say, well, that's enough stillness, let's go think, about, go think about something else. Well, how much stillness is enough? You keep reading about people saying, how little stillness can you get away with? Why would you want to get away with just a little bit? Why not learn how to indulge in it? You hear people talking about the, the dangers of stillness, the dangers of concentration, as if they were something you'd be best to avoid with a wide berth. But actually, as the Buddha said, they're central to the path. You, this is not a sevenfold path, it's an eightfold path. And the biggest fold of all is right concentration. So take some time to appreciate the fact that you can get the mind to settle down, and then see what's required to keep it settled down. This is where you have to fend off the mind's impatience its desire for entertainment, its desire for all kinds of things. The arguments that come out say, well, now you've, you've got all this free time, you can plan that meal you were planning, or you can plan that book you were planning, or you can plan that project you were planning. And you have to say, no, this is more important. Or it does require some appreciation. Because after all, if you're going to be dealing with the defilements, one, you have to be able to see them, and two, you need something to fall back on when they start making claims. In other words, a sense of pleasure. As the Buddha said, you can't get past sensuality without having a pleasure like this or higher. You can know all you, you've read about the dangers of sensual desire and the dangers of anger or whatever, but those things have an immediate gratification. And when you're fighting them off, you need something else to provide an alternative gratification. So it's good to learn how to 
work with the breath, play with the breath, so we can get a sense of ease inside. And John Fuing would often talk about this need for play in the concentration. It's one of the ways that you can get past being bored with being still. You can play with the breath energies. You can play with the, the elements in the body. In other words, if you're feeling heavy, well, what would lighten your sense of the body right now? What sensations in the body already there are already light? Focus on those. If you're feeling cold, well, what sensations are already warm? Focus on those and see what happens. As for the lightness or heaviness of the body, there are times when you really get sensitive to the breath. That you can notice when you breathe in, you, there's a feeling that the energy is going up in the body. If you get too much of that, you get that symptom that Hakuin called Zen sickness, in other words, a tightness and sense of pressure on the head. I'll just learn how to reverse it. Think that when you breathe in, everything's coming down, coming down from the top of the head, going down, 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 kind of melting down. And that'll lower the tension. You can go through the body and try to notice if there's any tension that you can release, any tension around your, your wrists, your ankles, your elbows, your shoulders. In a place where the joints are coming together. And if you have trouble seeing what's tense and what's not, see if you can compare left side and right side. How about your left hand and your right hand, your left wrist and your right wrist, forearms, elbows, upper arms, shoulders, and start down with the feet. Work your way up the legs. Compare one side to the other, and if you can see that one side has more tension than the other, well, let it go. Release the tension if you can. And then watch it as you breathe in, breathe out, and notice, does the tension come back when you breathe in? If it does, well, think of what you can do to release that. There are a lot of sensations in the body you can play with. And then as you get interested in playing with them, you find that you can gain a sense of greater and greater well-being, greater lightness. You can very deliberately erase some of the perceptions you're holding in mind about where the body is, what What's wrong with it right now? What its shape is? The whole question of having a surface. Just think of it as a mist of little sensation points. Hold that perception in mind. What you're doing as you play with this is you get more and more absorbed in the sensation of the body from within. And the pleasure you gain from that is a lot less dangerous than the, the desire you might have for sensual pleasures. Those warnings about the danger of jhana are really misplaced. As the Buddha said, the big danger is that you get there and then you don't want to go anywhere else. Now compare that with the dangers of sensuality. People kill over sensual desire. There's Fights within a family over sensual desires, fights between families, fights between nations. All the work you have to do in order to gain sensual desires, sensual pleasures. That's really dangerous. Then there are the dangers of trying to skip concentration and going straight to insight and getting certified with this or that level. The sense of pride just totally closes off any possibility of getting any progress. So concentration is a safe place to be. The stillness of mind is a safe place to be. There's that nice passage in Ajahn Mahabho where he's talking about when Ajahn Mun passed away. And he's sitting there contemplating now that his teacher was gone, what was he going to do? He felt like a wild animal in the forest with no doctor to look after his diseases. Then he thought of some of the things that Ajahn Mahan had told him. One of them was, if anything comes up in the mind that you're not sure of whether it's something you should go with or not, just stay with the sense of awareness, the knower inside. In other words, don't commit to anything. 
Just be aware, 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 and still, and watch. And maybe you'll see exactly where there's something wrong with that event in the mind. Or if you can't figure out, at least it'll pass. And you won't jump onto any conclusions about it. So stillness is a safe place to be. Think of those images in the canon of the, the quail caught by the hawk. It wandered away from the field where it ordinarily stayed, and the hawk came down and got it. And it was being carried off. The quail said, oh, if only I'd stayed in my ancestral territory, you wouldn't have been any match for me. That irritated the hawk. It didn't say anything. He just said, well, where is your ancestral field? And the quail said, a field newly plowed with all the clods of earth and stones turned up. And so the hawk let him go. He said, okay, go there, but you'll still be able, I'll still catch you. You won't escape me. And so the quail goes down, stands on a stone, starts taunting the hawk, come and get me, you hawk, come and get me, you hawk. And the hawk folds his wings and swoops down on the quail. And just as the quail sees it coming at him at full speed, he hides behind the stone. And the hawk shatters his breast on the stone. The field, as the Buddha says, stands for the four establishings of mindfulness. Outside of the field stands for your immersion in sensual pleasures. What it calls the five strings of sensuality, enticing sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations. Stillness is your safe place. You go out looking for sensual pleasures, they, they can pull you further and further afield and get you in all kinds of danger. Whereas if the mind is really still, it's safe from a lot of things, and it's a position where it can see things a lot more clearly. So have some respect for your concentration. Have some respect for whatever stillness you can develop in the mind, whether it's stillness in the midst of a chattering mind, and it is possible. Find some spot with a breath where things feel still, and even though the mind isn't settling down yet, at least you can be still there watching, waiting to let things calm down. And as the stillness inside gets more and more dominant, then you can start indulging in it, as the Buddha said. Play with the sensations, play with your perceptions. So enjoy being here. One way of playing with your perceptions is if you have a pain in the front, that seems to be in the front of the body, ask yourself, well, what if it's actually in the back and you've mislabeled it? How about relabeling it and see what that does? Or this whole thing about you're sitting here, if your eyes were open, you'd be facing forward. Now you close your eyes. Why do you have a forward and a back in the mind? Forward and back, that's an affair of the body. Can you erase that perception? And you notice that, okay, the perception perception will come up and you'll ordinarily go with it, but you, now you have the choice. You can say, I don't need that perception right now. You can drop it. It's playing around like this that you learn a lot about the aggregates. You learn about all the things that you need to know to gain insight. But you play around with them in the stillness. When you're tired of playing, you just rest and be right here. It's a good place to be. It's part of the training, and as the Buddha said, it's the heart of the path in the sense that all the other factors of the path are its requisites. The things that right concentration uses. So right here is where you want to be. And you want to learn how to disidentify with any voices that would say, this is getting boring, this is not interesting. One way you can just say, be stubborn and not listen to the voices. The other way is say, well, I actually can create a sense of well-being here. I can create a sense of interest in being here. Use your imagination. There are lots of potentials here in the present moment. The Buddha talks about what he calls properties in Dhatu. The physical properties are also properties in the mind. That when they're provoked, will give rise to events in the mind or the body. And when they're not provoked, they go back into stillness. To what extent are you provoking things that you don't even realize you're provoking? 
certain patterns of thought, patterns of perception that you just keep repeating over and over again. Can you catch yourself doing those and say, hey, what if I stopped doing that? What would happen? There are other things that you've never tried to provoke before. We'll try to provoke them, see what happens. There's plenty to play with here. And that's when you're learning a musical instrument, sometimes just playing around with it. it teaches you how to be really good at playing it. And playing around with the breath. It teaches you a lot of things you're going to need to know, not only about the breath, but also about the mind. So do what you can to get absorbed in the breath and appreciate the stillness, long periods of stillness. It's good for the body, it's good for the mind. Because there's a sense of well-being that goes with it. It nourishes you in your fight against the defilements. And because of the stillness, you can actually see them, see what's going on. As John Fuhrman said to one of his students, this is the foundation. And you want to make sure the foundation is strong, so don't worry about how long you're spending with it. When the time comes to build the stories on top of the foundation, you don't have to be afraid about their falling down. So make this solid, steady, and secure because everything else will depend on this.